Hey, let me ask you a question. I wonder if anybody else's kids are like mine. Drop me a comment if you see this and if you can answer this. I'd like to like to hear from you. So my kids have a really hard time with interrupting people, and it drives me nuts. And when I say people, I mean me, right? So like whenever I'm talking to like other adults, even when I'm talking to other kids, but particularly other adults, it's like I have to like literally put my hand over their mouth. Like they'll just come, like I'll be talking to somebody and they're just going, hey, daddy, daddy, there's a cloud outside. Like, yeah, there's, there's always clouds outside. It's like, what is that? Why do they, like, they see you talking to somebody. And then that's the other thing too, is like, they completely ignore you all the time. Like you can tell them, you know, do this, don't do that. Hey, your, you know, your milk's too close to the edge. You need to move that. And then of course they spill their milk. And, but then when you're actually talking to an adult, all of a sudden, like you just hear, what's a dickhead, daddy? And you're like, oh crap, he was listening to me that whole time. Now he's gonna, now he's gonna find out the person I was talking about and said, daddy called you a dickhead. What's a dickhead? So that's gonna be my problem. I don't know, I don't know why kids are like that. Why can't they just, is it just like totally impossible for them to be quiet? They can't, it's like, this This is an insurmountable challenge. Like, they've got the sixth sense of, oh, look, daddy's talking to another adult. Let me make sure I go over there and interrupt him. I don't know what it is, but it can be quite frustrating at times. The problems, the challenge, the struggle of being a dad, oh, it's real. It's real. How are you guys doing today? I was, speaking of family, the thing I was wanting to talk to you guys about today was the was the impact of technology on the family dynamic. I was thinking, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Talk to a lot of people and their their kids and, you know, how things have changed, you know. A, a really common thing that a lot of people with teenagers have these days is a lot of teenagers aren't getting their cars. They're not getting their driver's license so they get their cars, which was a huge deal to me and, like, everybody else my age. When you turn, like, 15, 14 and a half, you were like, can I go apply for my learner's permit yet? Because you get your learner's permit at 15. And I remember when that changed, that was like a big deal because you used to have to be 16 to get your learner's permit. And then it went to 15. And then it was like, oh, one year closer. Because the whole idea, of course, was you would drive with an adult for a year before you actually get your driver's license. But now I guess kids are just not doing that as much. And the big reason is, I mean, we've got Grubhub, we've got Zoom, we've got, of course, video games where people play online together. So there's not as big of an emphasis on traveling back and forth to people's houses. I know that was a huge deal for me. When I was a kid, it was going to somebody's house, or it was going to the mall, or it was going to the arcade. It was doing something, getting out, being independent. And I guess that's just not that big of a deal anymore. So that's one big way technology has changed family dynamics. The other way, of course, is through social media in a, in a good way. You're able to connect with, you take your, your family that you only see, you know, once a year during um, family reunions or something like that. You're able to keep up with them, see the kids grow. Or maybe you would just get, back in the day, you would just get a Christmas card and you'd, you'd see how all the kids were doing. But today, uh, you know, you can just follow them all year long. And that's, that's really cool. That's pretty interesting. The other big thing that I remember as a kid that's totally gone now, well, I shouldn't say totally gone, that's largely gone now is the shared media experiences. I remember at like 8 o'clock at night, you know, we had certain shows that we would watch, and like the, those prime time 8 o'clock shows, we would all sit down and watch together. Shows like, you know, like the uh, TGIF block. I think that was on ABC, wasn't it? That was when they would have like Step by Step and Family Matters and all those shows, Full House, all the big shows that they would all put together. And then there were other blocks, you know, as you got older, there would be blocks more geared towards older kids that would have like Friends and Seinfeld and stuff like that. But I remember like we would all gather together. One of our biggest shows on Sunday, they had the Lois and Clark show with Dean Cain and Terry, is it Terry Hatcher? They, uh, that was a great show. That was a fun show because the whole family got together. We watched it together because it came on right after church. So we'd come home and we'd all watch it together. And now that's largely gone. I'll tell you, with our family, the big thing that we do, we do do regular movie nights. So we'll watch Netflix, but we like to watch Netflix as a group. So 
instead of, uh, you know, like on Friday nights or Saturday nights, we'll fix something to eat, something that we can eat in front of the TV, like pizza or hot dogs or hamburgers or something like that. And we'll watch a movie together from Netflix. Now, the rest of the time, you know, the boys just watch whatever they want to anytime they want to. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it's eight o'clock or or two o'clock, they just watch whatever they want to watch. We don't have the, those kinds of shared experiences anymore. And then, of course, on top of that, there's the uh, video game phenomenon. Uh, the boys play tons of Minecraft and Roblox, and I don't even have the first clue what's going on on that stuff. I know when I was a kid, I'm sure my parents felt the exact same way when I was playing Mario Brothers and Zelda and stuff like that, and they had no clue what I was doing or what was going on. They just knew I was plopped down in front of the TV for hours. But the boys, will they'll show me stuff or they'll ask me things about Minecraft. And I'm, I stay pretty up on technology, but I don't get into the world of gaming and stuff. And I don't understand any of that stuff. And then, so there's no shared experience now. But I do remember when I was a kid, you know, my parents would play, we'd play board games together and video games together. So that was always pretty cool. And, and we try to do some of that as well. We don't do the board games as much. As the boys get older now, we're trying to do that a little bit more frequently, especially in the wintertime. And then, of course, outdoor activities we try to schedule and do together because I think that's really good and really important to spend time with your family doing outdoor activities and stuff like that. But, you know, the, there's just tons of freedom available now thanks to technology. It's not like it was when we were kids. I mean, you only had a handful of things you could do, and everything cost money. The only thing that was free was going to the mall, and you could just, you know, kind of go there and, and hang around and, you know, uh, waste time, really. I think about that quite a bit. I couldn't, I couldn't describe for you, like if you were to ask me, what I did when I went to the mall with my friends when I was a teenager, I couldn't just, like, I couldn't write it down. I don't know what we did. I don't have any singular memory. And we probably, and we went there at least every weekend. We went there hundreds of times. And I don't have any singular memories about what I did at the mall. I just remember going to the mall and hanging out. We would go get something to eat. We would go walk around the stores, but it's so weird. It's like, it's like this big, just singular memory. I wonder if the kids are going to be like that with Minecraft when they get older, you know, because they play it so often, they're probably not going to have any specific memories of any specific times. The, uh, now, there's lots of good technology that has made family dynamics a lot easier, too. Now, of course, when we were kids, you had kind of your boundaries. You go out and play until the streetlights come on. Now, kids can go different places, but they have phones, and, and they're able to communicate. Now, we don't let our kids have phones yet. Our boys are only nine and six, and I know some, some parents let their kids have phones by then, but I just don't think, I don't think it's quite appropriate for them yet. There's just too much, and I need to, uh, there's just too much out there on the internet that's, seems really negative not just like illegal either like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there that's just like weird rabbit holes and and stuff that seems like a, a huge waste of time and so I want them to think about I want them to live in the real world and be productive and understand the real world as much as possible so I just kind of keep away from from that type of stuff keep keep them away from like social media and that kind of stuff and I do I post things and I uh, and I and I share stuff with them, and we do stuff together for posting and shooting videos and stuff like that. But I do avoid letting them, you know, just just scroll through stuff because I don't think that's really very good for you, especially when you're young. I remember when the boys were real young, uh, I, I took them to a park, and I saw this little girl playing in the park, and she was on her phone, and she was like eight years old, and it was this beautiful sunny day it was summer it was warm there's all these kids playing on the playground and here she was just over on this picnic table tapping her way on her phone looking at something and I remember thinking that's that's awful that that's that can't be good for a developing brain so I made the commitment even back then and that was when the boys were real young to make sure that they didn't get sucked into that kind of stuff they need to be out in the world they need to be active 
they need to be plugged in. And I feel the same way about myself. I mean, it's, you know, there's tons of adults that are addicted to those little devices too. So it's scary stuff out there. I do think that it's kind of an addiction. I do think that that's the case. So 